Hey guys, what's going on? I uh, thought I'd do something different while we got a minute. Uh, I've been rolling all week with Tyler. Tyler's one of our trainers here at uh, RE West. And uh, we've been kind of chasing each other around all week, rolling together. Well, in separate trucks. But I uh, figured it'd be a good time to get some of those questions answered. Uh, Tyler can answer some of the questions and we can kind of talk about what RE West is about how it works, the training, what you should bring as a new driver or a new trainee. And uh, you can even add more questions. He's following, man, not following the channel. I almost said that. He's following the channel, so uh, he can jump in and answer any questions as well. If you, you guys just comment below and ask away. And without further ado. What's up, Todd? How's it going, buddy? <laughs> All right, so people are always asking, who is Ari West, what is Ari West about? Uh, how long have you been with RE West? Seven years next month. Seven years. What kind of training is offered at at, at RE West? Well, they we RE West as a company uh, offers CDL training, uh, but that doesn't include the permit. You have to get the permit on your own time. Uh, once you get your your permit, uh, they'll bring you up to the yard for uh, two weeks of yard training, which is in includes driving, learning how to shift the truck, you'll test in a manual, that way you don't get the restriction, and then you'll back in between cones and learn all your backing maneuvers and stuff like that for uh, two weeks, and then once you're done at that point, you have the ability to either go van or flatbed, and then that choice is you, and of course the, the pay is different depending on which route you take, flatbed is more than van, and uh, if you're van, you'll go out for three weeks with your trainer. And then after that, they'll bring you back to the yard and you'll test out one final time, do a little lap around the area, and then you'll be good to go. And then uh, the uh, if you do flatbed, they'll bring you back to the yard for an additional week of uh, securement training for the chains. And, and for, the, for the flatbed, we have step decks. And I don't know if they would jump you right into RGN, but we also have RGNs. Uh, renewable, removable goosenecks, uh, kind of heavy haul, you know, see hauling excavators and big tractors and stuff like that. And we have, I don't know how many we have, but we got seven axles and five um, axles and six axles. We got a, we got a few, uh, few seven axles. I'd say, uh, I don't know the exact number, but I'd say somewhere around 10. Uh, we got one specialized driver, the, 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 the 13 axle, 11 axle guy. Oh yeah. And then, uh. I never see him so yeah, you know, yeah. He, he's kind of on his own level um but yeah most time they don't put you straight into an rgn unless you have somewhat previous experience at the flatbed side so i know we discussed this one of the the number one question you get asked uh besides pay we'll cover that in a minute is how do you get started or how do you get into truck driving you <laughs> that's the, that's the number one question I, I get from somebody that's uh has not drove or is interested well that's a motorcycle <laughs> always getting shot <laughs> or is it interested in uh becoming a driver uh, is the it's probably the most question i get you know how do i start you know they don't know where to get the cdl they don't know who to talk to and a lot of times they don't have anybody to talk to about it and uh, that's why you started this channel is to get people more aware of a company, smaller company like ourselves and and whatnot. So, and that's the thing. There's I I did a lot a lot of research uh, before I came here, and I seen what people said about bigger companies and smaller companies and mega carriers such as you know uh, Swifts and Prime and Snyder and not to knock those companies because I haven't worked there. I don't know how they are, but um, there's a lot of different things to consider. And the number one, one of the biggest things that I seen in all my research was, hey, go to a smaller company. You'll be more of a person than a number there. And uh, see if that could send that out. Sorry, we're parked waiting to deliver in the morning and there's something going on. I don't know, <laughs> a war. I don't know. But, uh, you know a lot of those companies as far as the training they want to lock you into a contract for a year or two to pay back the cost of training well at RE West the training's 
100% free. The only thing they ask is that you stick around at, after you get your CDL, stick around at least six months or pay back, well, yeah, or pay back the cost of the metal, medical exam. Yeah, the, the main and, card. And any sign-on bonus that you might have gotten. Uh, it's a small price to pay for getting your CDL. Because yeah, most, most of your truck driving schools, they, they range anywhere from you know five thousand to ten thousand dollars to even get your CD. Yeah, I talked, I talked to one company, and it was five hundred dollars just to reserve a seat for the school, um, and then when you got there, you had to pay another five hundred dollars, and then the rest they, I guess, financed through the company until you worked for them, you worked it off over a year, year or year and a half. I can't remember exactly, but, um, but. Yeah, a lot of companies charge like that. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, what advice would you have for a new driver coming in that wants to get their CDL and uh, venture out on the road? Well, I get that question a lot, and uh, not all of the drivers that are or men or women that are interested in wanting to be a driver uh, have a family or married or got kids or anything like that or a strong relationship at home, but the majority of them do. So my advice to them would be if, if you have a significant other at home and uh, or children or anything like that, you got to have a strong home relationship. It's a, it's a, this is a, a career. It's a great career, but it's a life choice. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it ain't uh, easy out here either. And, uh, you know, you, it's not easy being away from home. And truck drivers make good money, uh, but the majority of that money is because you're not at home. Uh, now different companies have different home time policies and stuff like that uh, and you want to pick one that suits you or ask the company do they have one that suits you but uh, you need to make sure your significant other your kids and yourself expect time away from home and you all on board for this because it's a life strange I mean like I know for me being a musician I was gone a lot anyway before I came here say a command did it again you know, before I came here, that thing is finicky. Um, so I was already away from home a lot, so it wasn't that big of an issue. My kid, kids and wife were like, we're used to it. Uh, you being prior military, they were kind of used to it. Yeah. Um, and that's that's another thing, you know, it, where it's a great career for for military vets or or whatever because of that that factor. Uh, Besides just the, you know, the military training, but uh. Well, if you're if you're dead serious about doing this, um, first thing I would always recommend is, um, if you know somebody in the in the trucking industry, you got a, a family member, you got a a friend, uh, you can, you know, see if their company has a rider policy and uh, take a week out with them on the road and and uh, see what the lifestyle is like before you make a full commitment. Um, you know, just go out with them a week or two weeks and uh, and see the lifestyle. I mean, you can see amazing things out here. You know that. I know that. We've been to great places mm -hmm. and do great things. But that's not don't, all the don't job. Don't have a lot of time to stop. Yeah. Like, hey, you, check it out. You know, some people think it's that... Been Parliament. <laughs> some people think that this job is like a vacation. And I mean, and it can be. I mean, I've done it's great... It's what you make of it. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been to Major League Baseball games and been to Ocean and New Orleans and all kinds of fun stuff. But... There's a lot of work that goes on, and a lot of people don't realize that. So if you have the opportunity to to ride with somebody and actually physically see what goes on as a truck driver, it, that will help you make your decision. So I definitely recommend that. But and Ari West actually has a passenger policy as well as a pet policy. Um, I don't know if you're considering coming to Ari West, maybe give the company a call and go, "Hey, is there any way I could go go out for a week with a?" Uh, you know, one of your drivers, just to see what it's like, to see if I I'm really want to try this or, or really want to do this. Um, I don't know if they will or not because I'm not an office person. I drive a truck. <laughs> All right, so if if people decide to come to RE West to train, I know they have a – they put the trainees up in a bunkhouse for the two weeks that they're on the yard. Now, here it's pretty nice. I've never been there, but – there's a Walmart, there's Taco Bell, it's got washer, dryer, Wi-Fi, cable, all the, anything you'd need. Um, <clears throat> but once they're done with that initial two weeks, I would assume, you know, they go home for a couple of days and then they go out with one of you guys, uh, one of the trainers. What would they need to bring with them to put on, you know, on the truck for the, 
the two or three weeks that they're out with you guys? Uh, all of our trainers uh, here at RE West uh, pretty much accommodate, you know, to have two people in the truck. So it's not like we don't have any amenities in here. Most of us have microwaves, refrigerators, uh, top bunks, and. Uh, I mean, it looks just like this truck, you know. There's yeah. a top bunk, there's a bottom bunk. Uh, and it's uh, just a little newer than mine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then we'll recommend for them to bring, you know, two weeks worth of clothes, you know. So when we take showers and stuff, they have clothes to change into and whatnot. And uh, bring a shower caddy, a little shower hygiene kit, yeah. deodorant, shampoo, stuff like that. Uh, the towels are provided for uh, at the truck stops, but you, you, we tell them they can choose to bring their own towels and wash clothes. Yeah, I like to ha I have one in here just in case yeah, I go to somewhere that, you know, some of the... Uh, I don't know if they're provided at the service plazas, but I know there's shower facilities at some of the ser service plazas. almost said that, too, <laughs> on the toll roads. Uh, but I don't know if they provide towels for those. But. Yeah, they don't provide towels. So I always yeah. recommend them to at least bring one. Um, and then, we, of course, we have a shower at our yard, too, because sometimes you'll stay the night there and, uh, and whatnot. And, of course, they're not towel provided, so you'd have to have your own. Um, we all have a, a refrigerator of some sort, so we always recommend to bring, you know, food. You know, we all have microwaves. Bring soups, uh, sandwich meat, cheese, bread, potato chips. Uh, snacks. You know, Whatever. snacks and stuff. Because these truck stops are expensive, you know. They got mm -hmm. you where they want you, so they're going to charge you a fortune for whatever. And uh, it's definitely nice to have those amenities right there to you, to, just so you can grab them and stuff. Because yeah. sometimes you're like, tonight, like you and I right now, we're parked into the Glen Burnie on the side of the street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... The closest thing to eat is a McDonald's. It's like a mile well, we and a half probably walk. order a pizza, but you know. <laughs> and, uh, and ordering food all the time is not healthy. You know, you gotta you gotta stay healthy out <laughs> or here. Or cheap. <laughs> and, uh, and it's really hard to get away from healthy. So out here on the road, so you definitely want to stay healthy. Well, it's not hard to get away from healthy. But... No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not hard to get away from. I said that backwards. Yeah. Like there, but that happens. I do it all the time. Every video I, sit, I have, I've got <laughs> something where I, my mouth just overshoots my brain. And I don't know what I said. All right. Besides the food and clothing, you know, is there any other items that they should bring? Or yeah, uh, you definitely want to bring, uh, you know, a notebook, uh, you know, a writer's pad, anything like that, and and pens. And you'd want to take notes of anything your trainer has to say, um, because your trainer, myself, or you know, I got seven years experience. And then we got our our head guy, Mike Brown. You know, he's been here, you know, thirty six plus years. This guy's like Yoda. I mean, <laughs> Master Yoda. <laughs> And uh, he, uh, you know, there's no way, we only got you for three weeks. And there's no way I can take seven years of my experiences and cram it into you in three weeks. It's just mm -hmm. not possible. So it's very good to take notes, write it all down. That way you can go back to refer to it and whatnot. Well, let me say this. I I learned a lot of people was like, you know, two weeks on the yard, three weeks out with the trainer. You know, that's that's only five weeks. How can, you know, that's not a lot of time. I promise you, you learn, because I went through it, This and I learned everything I needed to know to do what I needed to do out here, um, to keep myself out of trouble. Now, with that said, there is a ton of stuff that you're going to learn on your own, and, and it's, everything you do, you're going to be like, okay, I learned that in training, or, hey, Tyler mentioned that to me when he was training me, or or whatever but it's it's there's a ton of you there's like he said there's no way you can cram all that in there i've learned so much over the last year since leaving my trainer uh that it's it's just unbelievable yeah i tell all my trainees that i, I do and i'm very confident in this company's training program uh we have a great group of trainers and uh we put out a lot of good drivers uh, but it is kind of short and uh, there's no way you're going to learn all that so I tell all my trainees I said just remember write down go over your notes all the time and just to be completely honest with you in the first three weeks you drive on your own you're going to learn more than I ever taught you um, absolutely but it's not necessarily uh, you know we teach you the basics we teach you yeah, all the maneuvers you need and all the real fine points that you need to do And uh, but when you get on your own that's when you learn how to really hone your craft right and really sharpen them. Right, learning the con, uh, the Qualcomm, or learning when to stop, and take a shower, or when to take your thirty, or yeah, because stuff when, like that. Because when you're with your trainer, you know he's going to run the clock basically to the way he's used to running it. So like when I run it, I take my showers when I want to take my showers. My trainee showers when I shower. 
etc and you know i when we get hungry we stop and eat and stuff but when you get on your own that's when you can learn to shape the clock to the way you like to do things you know you like to take your showers in the morning some people like to take them in the afternoon you know some people like to take them in the middle of the day because there's less people at the truck stop you know and yeah well just like to, uh, today or yesterday or this morning tyler made the comment he likes to run a little later at night and then sleep in a little later to go well i'm used to you know stopping earlier by getting up earlier and so we were driving today and and he's like man it's too early <laughs> yeah but hey you know even with that the back to the training there hasn't been one time that i haven't called one of the trainers that i know whether it be tyler or mike brown or, or my trainer steve and i can call them anytime they're going to answer the phone and, and tell me what we need to know you know if i if i have a question heck i'm I still ask questions. That's the key thing is ask questions. I even ask questions. I mean, uh, you're not going to know everything. And that's, an, that's another, good, another good rule. I know this is kind of not on that topic there, but it's another good rule to remember as a truck driver in general is you never know everything. The day you think you know everything is the day you're going to mess up. There's been days I've called Steven up about something and be like, hey, uh, uh, do you know such and such place? You ever been there? No. Okay. Well, what about this place? Yeah, I've been there. How do you get in there? I can't remember. So, you know, they're not necessarily going to be able to help you out on certain things, but that's where you got tools like Google Earth and, and things like that to help you out. I don't know if that's kind of off topic, but, but, uh, I mean, we could it's, talk about, it's rare that, I mean, now that we're, you know, you're on that topic, we could go ahead and spill out what some good tools to have as a truck driver. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and how important it is to utilize all of them. Um, I know when I look at a route, you know, I get the route on the Qualcomm and it's not always the best route. So that's one of the reasons we'll call, you know, the trainers or Mike Brown, who's the head trainer and, and be like, Hey, what do you think about this? And you go, Oh no, don't do that. Go this way. And he'll give you approval to go a different way or, or whatever. Um, but every time I get a route, I'll look at Google maps or my Apple maps on my iPhone and I'll compare that to the route I have to the GPS, to the Atlas especially if it's side roads i'll get that atlas out and yeah yeah you know make sure hey i'm not going to hit a bridge there or i okay i can be on that road or i can't be on that road or or whatever yeah or, or just call like you said call one of us and you know um you're never out of the inner circle you always call somebody else somebody has been the way you're going and they will help you out uh but the key there is, like you said, you use all three things. You know, you don't necessarily just put all your trust in the one thing. No, I never trust the GPS. Yeah, you never trust the GPS. You never, you know, even you know, you might miss something in the atlas because it's kind of small. You know, you might, you know, you don't trust Google Maps because it's made for cars. Right. But you cross-reference all three, and you know, don't be afraid to use the technology. I mean, it's, it's yeah. great. You know, you got old school drivers who are like only use the atlas. You yeah. know, but uh, you know, I'll say this that gps i have is pretty dead on every time i use it uh it's there's been a few times where it's uh it's got me or it hadn't really got me stuck but i just look at it you know like a dog when you make a funny noise like hmm? why does yeah. it want me to go that way but that's pretty rare yeah i mean even but with I, all this technology you still got to possess a little bit of common sense yeah i also <laughs> i also go in and, and i'll shape it to the how i want it to go you know so I guess that might have something to do with it being dead on. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, technology is pretty great. <laughs> uh, all right. So now some of the questions people want to know. What kind of trucks do you run? How new are they? How old are they? Are they well-maintained? Um, stuff like that. Uh, Ari West, we run uh, Freightliners uh, pretty much across the board. Um our van size, uh, they're all condo trucks, which means that they have two bunks, uh, and they're full roof. And then we have flatbed trucks. We'll get to that in a second, but, uh, um, they're all 2016 to 2020. Uh, this one here is a 2018 that, uh, Tony's in, I'm in a 2020 and, uh, the oldest one we got is a 2016. I'm almost positive of that. I will say this, the 2016s, I was in a 2016 and they're phasing them out cause they sold mine as I was getting ready to head out with a run. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not very many of them left, uh, and I don't think we have any of the 10-speeds available to train in as, at this moment. We might have one. Maybe I think they one. Still, I think they still got the training truck. Um, I think I saw them out there the other day. Now, when it comes to the, to the van division, we pull two types of trailers. Uh, we have the 53, actually three types. I forgot about the special one. Uh, we got the 53-foot drop-deck trailers. Uh, 
what the uh, drop deck trailer means is that it's a little taller on the inside and the trailer so we we haul water heaters primarily so they double stack them. i actually did a video on the drop decks uh there's yeah a, there's i watched a pre, the video there's a pre-trip video and so it kind of explains that that particular trailer it's it's lower so when we're back to a dock we have to get out and and jack the back of the trailer up so it's even with the dock matter of fact that's what tyler and i are both pulling right now um uh, but uh i forgot where i was going my bad <laughs> but yeah that's the drop deck trailers and we have the straight frames yeah straight frames are your standard trailer that you normally see all over the highway i mean everybody kind of knows uh, straight frames big tires and you know 53 foot long you know so a common trailer and then we have the special little trailers that we have they're, they're the drop decks but they're 48 feet oh, the long 48 foot uh, yeah. we have we have a few of those and they look I have, weird i have <laughs> one of those in one of my videos too if you go back to the video of me in new jersey or no what new jersey where'd i go philadelphia uh i was putting that's what i was driving when i got in that tight spot with the with the pothole and all that that was a rough one yeah yeah that's a, that's a, that's a tough <laughs> that place was one of, that was one of my first stops with the trainer i was like oh god and, uh, that, and they look a little weird because we're uh Ari west has a great black on black outfit and yeah. then that trailer's white so yeah, <laughs> it looks I, a little I different one the other day oh, okay. and then yeah. um when you step into our flatbed side they have the step uh the, the mid-roof trucks the mm -hmm. um they're a little a little shorter on the inside they still have two bunks but there's a uh, there's just not quite as much room, headroom in, the, in those trucks. But they're Freightliners as well, and they range from 16 to, to 20 as well. 20, yeah, 20 as well. And then uh, they run uh, two types of trailers as well. Um, they have the step deck, 53-foot um, spread axle trailers. And then uh, they're all aluminum, and they're pretty new as well. I, I want to say they're only maybe a year, year and a half old. They're, yeah, not, they're not very old at all. And then... Uh, we also run the RGNs, uh, the, as I call them, the double drops, because you can either drop the whole trailer or you can just drop the back half and keep the neck attached to the truck, uh, which makes it easier for unloading and loading, and you can haul more weight on and stuff. Um, I got several people that I have trained that are on that side, and uh, and they love it. It's great over there. And then when it comes to equipment, all of our trucks, every one of them, uh, are equipped with uh, APUs. Uh, I'd say at least 90% of them are Thermaking tri-pack evolutions um i've only i've only had one that didn't have that had a carrier and it was a it was that penske truck i was in for a couple of weeks before i got this truck yeah um the the thermo kings are really nice they got power inverters in them already pre-installed you don't have to worry about that they'll run microwaves refrigerators whatever you would like to put in there um all of our trucks have electronic log books uh, we have some are that are the qualcomm brand we have the new omni tracks which are starting to switch over to um, all of our trucks are equipped with drive cam uh, for the safety of the drivers that way I would like to speak on that there is a lot of people that hate these cameras we have driver facing cameras it doesn't bother me one bit I don't even know it's there uh, it's safe I mean, I, mean I, I, can count. I, I also have my own dash cam in here just that way if anything does happen I've got an own personal copy of it you know without having to go through the company or whatever which i'm sure i would see it anyway um i mean we joke around so ah crap i set my camera off again because we'll hit a bump and it'll go off but it, it's so it's it's weird because one time it'll go off and you'll hit a hard bump it won't go off and then you'll graze something and it'll go off but it don't bother me it's never they don't bug us about it our safety department is awesome Anna Marie's awesome. She'll call. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, and if there is something weird that she'll or you hit a bump, it goes off. She'll call you and ask you about it, and then she'll be like, "Okay," you know, unless it's something that you shouldn't be doing. You just gotta have the mindset that it's there for you and your yeah. safety. Because if you get an accident on the road, I mean, the first thing they do is, "Oh, it's the truck driver's fault. He's a professional driver, so he should know how to do this." And and really, that car cut you off and hit you, you know, and and, mm -hmm. and if you, that's there to protect you, to have video evidence that that's not what happened. You've also seen some of the videos on my channel, just from my personal dash cam, people just whipping all the way across all lanes right in front of me, uh, merging in, coming to a complete stop in, in the acceleration lane, and I, yeah, it's, people are nuts out here. And then, uh, these trucks are also always uh, every one of our trucks also have the pre-pass and which is actually the elite pass and uh and the easy pass um pre-pass what 
the way the pre pass is for is for the way stations, and if it goes off kind of like by your company safety score, kind of sorta. So basically, like if you come through a way station, if you ever seen those overhead things that go over the interstate that look like a cone, looks like a camera or something hanging down yeah. on the post. Uh, right by a way station, what that does is it reads the the thing, and then and you will either get a green light or a red light, and that either basically just lets you bypass the scale. I mean, we just ran what total about 650 miles past from yesterday to here or from Middleville to here yeah like from that. last night to here yeah and uh I don't think we had to stop at any scale one well we had to we'd stop, stop in Maryland but just, they didn't but, have pre-pass but they don't have pre-pass I think I'll just repeat what you said <laughs> um yeah and it's it's weird sometimes to me because half the time mine will give me the green light and I'll go right on through but I'll come back through empty and I'll have to go through and I'm like that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, a question that Ari West gets a lot, too, uh, it has to do with this next thing our truck's equipped with, and it's the easy pass. And uh, a lot of people are like, oh, uh, well, I heard Ari West doesn't run tow roads. And that's not true. There's certain ones that Ari West does like to try to avoid because of the cost of them, and there's a better way to go that doesn't add many miles. Uh, but the easy pass the, takes care of all the tolls. The big no-no is uh, the, the Pennsylvania Turnpike. All the Pennsylvania turnpikes, <laughs> and I have ran it twice in the last month. Yeah, if it benefits with the approval. load, with or, approval, that's the that's or the if, the if the weather's bad or if it benefits the freight. One time because the weather was bad, one time because it benefited the freight. Yeah, they'll they'll run you on any tow road in the country. They're not they're not above putting you know they're they're not like oh well you can't run it at all if it's. If it's a danger or a hassle to the driver, they'll put you on it. I mean, a lot of people don't think that. The big but. thing is they're they're putting us in really nice trucks. I mean, this truck is really nice, and they, oh maintenance, they take care of it. It's my trainer. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry about that. Um, so I was saying, you know, they, as far as the toll roads, they, they put us in really nice trucks. Um, they're very well maintained. We have a Penske shop right on our yard. Uh, so, you know, I, I think they try to save money where they can, i.e. toll roads, so they can afford to put everybody in nicer trucks. I mean, we're a small company. We only got, what, 150 trucks? Yeah, somewhere around that. And, uh, you know, they do a, a great job of maintaining them and, and trying to keep them nice, so. I think that's part of the trade-off, you know. Yeah, like we even have a national account with Penske. I mean, any Penske in yeah. the United States, you you get worked on, service, mm -hmm. etc. Well, the reason I mentioned it at the yards because that's one thing Ari West too. They have, you know, they offer the home on weekends and stuff. So if I have a, I'm a home weekend guy. So when I go back, if I have an issue with the truck, you know, no matter how, how big or how small, more than likely it's going to be repaired before I go back out the next time. Uh, I mean, if it's a DOT issue, it'll definitely be done before I go back out. But, um, you know, if I've got a screw loose, which is very possible, uh, or, you know, the APU is not kicking on when it should or, or something like that, they'll take care of it before I go back out, you know? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Down to the nitty gritty. Average miles, how many miles you get per week, which determines your pay if you're paid by mileage. What can we say about the average miles? It, well, some of our drivers are paid by the hour. Some of the new positions they're offering right now on Facebook. Uh, I will say this. Michigan drivers uh, running out of Grand Rapids up there, they're paid hourly. Yep, and so are the Baltimore. Because we have a yard in Baltimore as well. So. Yes, have a yard in Baltimore. Um and then some, they're actually advertising for a flatbed job opportunities right now on Facebook for like, I think $32 an hour. That's the one out of Olathe, right? The yeah, well, the... yeah, they'll be running the uh, Olathe cooling towers hmm. uh, account, so. And that's running off a step deck trailer. <laughs> but when it comes to being paid by the mile, uh, now depending on when y'all are watching this video, uh, the rates change. Uh, right now, they're offering 36 cents a mile if you do not have a cdl if you go through the training course it's 36 for the van and 38 for the flatbed and uh, i wasn't even sure what that was but the that changes that goes up uh from time to time so you definitely want to talk to a recruiter and i've gotten a i've gotten a, a mile or per mile rate increase 
every three months since I started and got my CDL. So the pay goes up pretty quick. Uh, the mileage, it, it can vary. If you're home every weekend, I average somewhere between 2,000, 2,500 miles, uh, but I'm home every weekend. If I stay out, you know, two weeks at a time or, or whatever, that would go up. Um, so you get, I'm not home every weekend. I mean, I do get home a lot of weekends, um, but I'm more the stay out every other weekend type guy. Um, cause that's what I signed under when I started here seven years ago. And, uh, so you know, my average is a little better, you know, cause that's I work the weekend, you know? Uh, so my average normally runs from 25 to 32, uh, depending on if I go home. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, there's some weekends I'll stay, I'll say, Hey, you know, I'm not going to get home well till late Friday or Saturday morning. I'll just, just keep me out and I'll, my average will go up when that happens too. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, but it, it all depends on how often you want to be home and how hard you run. I mean, you can come out here and average, I don't know, 1,600 to 2,000 if you don't want to run hard. But it's 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 up it's up to you, really. I, I mean, well, and that's the thing with trucking, too. It's, uh, you know, that, that's an average, you know. You know, mm -hmm. every week's not going to be that. Um, you know, your average is say 2,500 miles a week. It doesn't mean you're going to get 2,500 miles a week every week. It's an average. Right. It's so good. one week you might get 1,800 miles. Well, the next week you might get 3,300. And, and you like know, holidays, like Christmas. Yeah. That, that's you know, cause this, <laughs> yeah, well, this company in general, you know, they're real big on being home for the holidays and being home for family and stuff like that. So like for the week of Christmas, like we practically shut down and, and, uh, and that really hurts your miles. You yeah. Know. I ran a load on Monday. And then I didn't go back out till Thursday, I think. Yeah, I, was, I got home Monday, and I didn't, I didn't get back to, I didn't leave back out till Saturday. But when I left out Thursday, I stayed out all the way through New Year's and didn't come back home till the following. Well, that's weekend. also when they was getting my new truck ready too. So I didn't leave till Saturday. So mm -hmm. yeah, I had a flat on his new truck. I thought that was sending <laughs> hard. I'm like, hey man, you're, <laughs> you got a flat already. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new truck. Um. Let's see, the mile, average miles. Like I said, they have home weekly or they'll keep you out as long as you want to stay out. And the freight's there. This place, they have freight. It's got to be moved and it's not going away. Yeah, we have, we have contracts, you know. Uh, it's not like we're just on the broker boards all day trying to find loads. This company actually has legit contracts with dedicated, you know, they're not dedicated routes, but they're dedicated, you know, to haul so many loads per uh, week or, or whatnot through quarter or whatever the company has uh, you know uh, obligation to fill. And if you take if you take the load of uh, hot uh, water heaters is one of the you know the big contracts. If you take a load out, they're going to get you. You might get a broker load coming back, uh, but if you're close to one of the other places we deliver out of, they may deadhead like they deadhead me and him from Miamisburg, Ohio, up to Middleville, Michigan, uh, to get these loads. You know, it just depends on what they have going out. Uh, but they may give you a broker load to get you somewhere else, to get you in position to get that next load. So it, it works full circle. I guess. Yeah, I mean, they have contracts with water heaters and those cooling towers we was talking those about in the uh, Case of New Holland tractors, uh, Massey Ferguson tractors. <laughs> Got some of those tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we, we both do. Um, you know, to. Uh, Three different brands of water heaters we call it four actually that we haul. Mm -hmm. um, you know we got con contracts with Rack Room Shoes, uh, contracts with Shoe Carnival. Yeah, I took some of that up to Evansville. Those years. are always out in California. Those fun rides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we uh, we definitely have freight to keep keep you moving. You would, it's an enjoyable job. <laughs> and one thing you got to look at too with, when you're shopping for companies, and I'm not just saying this because I I work here, but I've heard from other people at other companies you know they'll tell you you're gonna make this per mile say 46 cents a mile but they'll include your safety bonus in that so your average is 46 cents a mile but you're really making say 36 cents a mile and if you if nothing's messed up with any of the loads or you're not late or or whatever then you get your 10 cents a mile so here it's dry and cut here's what you get per mile uh, however many miles you get, there it is. 
Um, and any extra pay, that's completely extra. Yeah, there's some, some of them are driver assist. It's not bad. It's not like we're unloading the truck. We help unload the truck, which means, like he's stating, water heaters, sometimes they'll be stacked. We have to pull them down so they can put them on a pallet or pull them out of the truck. And some of them, like I had one the other day, it was driver assist. And they're like, no, we don't allow the drivers to help. And they signed off on it anyway, and then you get extra money. Yeah, or they have so much help, you're just kind of in the way. <laughs> yeah, you're just kind of standing there watching. Or they, have the, or they have the special truck, you the, know, the clamp, clamp truck, trucks. you know, to go in there to unload them basically for you. And, you, you know. We used to have one. It's not a driver assist anymore, which is kind of a bummer. But well, this all one in we particular did, used to be. We just spun it around. That was it. That's what we did. Lamesburg, actually. Uh, yeah, that's all it is. Funny. Well, London Dairy, all you gotta do is put tape around top of them. <laughs> I've never been to that one. I keep hearing about it. Though. That's, that's one of the great runs right there, man. You gotta get on that one. You gotta get a hold of Scott. <laughs> but, anyway, I hope this uh, has been informative. And like I said, if we if we missed anything or forgot anything, or didn't answer any questions you may have, that down there in the comments. Uh, yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> That was for your daughter, wasn't it? Yeah, it's for my daughter. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, question in the comments, I'll answer, or Tyler get on the answer. Devin may come on and answer. I don't know if you want him to, but he will. Yeah. <laughs> but, it might not uh, make sense, but in his mind, it does. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it answered some questions. Hope you come to RA West. Give a big shout-out to Tina Jobs. Give Tina a call. She'll answer any other questions as well and get you started. Put me or Tyler down for a reference. <laughs> and uh, and uh, just tell them you've seen the video. In the meantime, like, subscribe, share. Talk to you guys soon. Later. Peace out. See you.